Hello and welcome to the Tuesday edition of DC Today. It is a much nicer and sunnier day here in New York City, even though the traffic and overall commotion of a presidential visit combined with a UN uh, General Assembly is still quite, quite uh, massive. Uh, yesterday, taking all that and combining it with the rainstorm, it was a surreal experience here on the east side of Manhattan. But um, things have settled a little bit, and, and markets today as well, not, not anything super exciting. The S&P was down 20 basis points. NASDAQ was down about a quarter of a percent. The Dow uh, at one point was down 300 points, but even it closed down only 100 points. And we go into the Fed day tomorrow. Uh, oil hit a 10-month high this morning. Let's see, where did it close? It closed uh, just barely up, but still right around $91 a barrel. Uh, bonds uh, continue selling off. Yields moved higher um, again today. The 10 years, as a matter of fact, was up almost five basis points, up to 4.37%. So you continue to see upward movement in yields, pushing bond prices a bit lower. Interestingly, I noticed that last month the um, Japanese ownership of U.S. Treasury bonds went up by $7 billion. Chinese ownership went down by $13 billion. So you don't have any big movement in in category of ownership that explains some of the the supply issues. If, if anything, it's just kind of um, you know re shifting around within the categories. More from one country, less from another. Um, a little less from the Fed and more from the private sector. Th things like that. Um, off the subject of the extremely interesting U.S. bond market is this UAW strike. Uh, the United Auto Workers, right now, it appears that they're going to increase the stations at which they are picketing and striking by this weekend. And again, their list of demands that they've published include a 40% pay increase over a four-year contract, um, a 32-hour work week, um, so what is that, two days, right? No, I'm sorry, four days. Um, overtime pay for anything over 32 hours, expanded retirement benefits, and then uh, the same pay for new workers that are doing the same job as more experienced workers. I don't have the foggiest idea which points within their list of demands are pliable or flexible, which ones uh, the automakers will give in on which ones the uh, union um, spokespeople will give in on. I, I have no idea. I don't know how long the thing will go. And it's just a very strange set of alliances and whatnot. And it'll be interesting to see how this kind of plays out. The Fed did meet all day today. The, and by Fed, I refer to the Federal Open Market Committee, the FOMC. And then they will conclude their meetings tomorrow and come out and announce in a written release that they're not raising rates and that they'll stay on pause for a bit. And then um, and then Jerome Powell will have his press conference. And generally speaking, we're about a year and a half into this cycle now where you can get some pretty wild volatility around that, depending on what they kind of indicate. Uh, we will see what happens tomorrow. And volatility should not be looked at in the moment um, around equities, uh, but bond yields alone, which is a far more relevant factor. Uh, Speaker McCarthy may have gained an upper hand with some of the more obstructionist members of his own caucus in this negotiation. I don't know that that's the case. There's been con conflicting reports of what's going on, um, but there are some members of the Freedom Caucus that are supportive of it. There's still some saying that they're holding out, so they, they we don't know where that stands. And like I said, it doesn't really matter in the end. It's not going to end up happening, but it's just a question of whether or not they push the, the Republicans by lack of a unified deal from their House majority push into a shutdown or if they have an agreement, but then it gets rejected by the Senate and the White House. And then that ends up being the catalyst. And so there's some political relevance to all that. Uh, housing starts, by the way. OK, so what else within the market? Healthcare was the leading performing sector. It was up just 10 basis points. Energy was the lowest. It was down just 80 basis points. And I mentioned oil at 91 a barrel. Housing starts declined over 11 percent in August. So when I first saw the headline, I thought that was a, a catastrophic, apocalyptic number. 
and it isn't good, but it turns out that a pretty high proportion of the housing starts decline, housing start declines were in multifamily, about 25%, and that skewed the number. Single family was still down, nevertheless, and they're down 15% versus a year ago. So we're 150,000 new homes on an annualized basis, less than what had been expected, and what had been expected is way inadequate. So there's significant issue there in the housing supply story, nothing new. A thoughtful um, reader asked the question what we think about convertible bonds. Are they uh, a wonderful way to get equity-like returns with just bond-like safety, principal protection, all that kind of stuff? And I had to explain that, first of all, let's just start with the conclusion. Anytime anything, ever, no matter what it is, is presented as a certain level of reward with not an accompanying correlated risk. You don't have to listen to it beyond that. Somebody's lying to you. It's either because they're a grifter, a charlatan, a thief, or they're an idiot, uh, or they mean well, but they don't understand the way the world works. There's all kinds of possibilities. But just that notion that such a la-la land exists should be rejected out of hand. But, you know, to the extent people want to like say, okay, well, I sure like the idea of it. Can you at least tell me why? Besides the philosophical reality that such a Pollyannish uh, notions don't exist. And if they did, they'd get priced away in about five seconds. Um, convertible bonds actually do not do that. They have a conversion ratio that allows a bond that has already a lower coupon. That's why companies issue them because they can save money in servicing the debt because the investor is receiving a conversion privilege. So they're willing to take a little less coupon from the bond in exchange for this conversion to equity idea. But if the underlying stock before conversion gets hammered, the value of that bond gets way hammered because obviously the conversion's worth less. If it rallies a lot, the company has the ability to call the bond. Um, if the bond itself gets tanked, it probably means there's something wrong with the stock too. And then your value of your bond is deteriorated and your actual principal value of investment. So, yeah, there, there's good things that can happen. And there's bad things that can happen, like any bond or like any stock. But mixing the two together doesn't create a magical solution. It's important to not um, be misled. I hope that's helpful. Uh, clients will receive weekly portfolio holding support tomorrow. Please check that out early. There's some big things we want you to read in that. And the Fed comes out tomorrow, middle day. You know the story there. Thanks. For listening, thanks for watching. Thank you for reading the DC Today. We'll see you tomorrow on Fed Day. Mm -hmm.